Okay, hello. In this video, I'd like to look at the uh, body-centered cubic, or BCC unit cell, or crystal structure. Okay, so body-centered cubic. Often we just call it BCC. So again, as we did for, or as we, as we do for FCC, we can start with a unit cell, a cubic unit cell, and then position some atoms in that unit cell. And so again, we're going to position atoms at each of the corners. And this time I'm just drawing them straight in as the fraction of the atom that's inside the unit cell. I'll dot in the back of the unit cell here. So you can see there's going to be um, an atom at the back bottom left corner. So this is again, as we have for FCC, 1 8 of an atom at each corner. And as the name implies, body-centered, we're going to have to position an atom in the very center of the cube. So I'll try my best to do this and sketch it here. I'll add a little descriptive arrow. This is at the center of the cube. And how much of an atom is it? It's one complete atom. So the number of atoms inside a BCC unit cell then is going to be one atom from the center plus 1 8 times 8 corners <coughs> equals 2 atoms. Or again, we might just say, we would just say n equals 2 for BCC. So the next thing that I should show you, and again, it's a little bit difficult to see from my freehand sketch, perhaps, but it's the direction that the atoms are touching. So the atoms, the first thing I'll, I'll show you is the atoms are not touching along the edges. That's important to appreciate. They're not touching along the edges. But which direction do they touch? Well, actually, they touch across the cube diagonal. That is this front, bottom, left atom touches the central atom, which in turn touches the back, bottom, right or sorry, back top right. So if I draw a little red line here across the cube diagonals, if my artistic abilities are not too bad, that worked out OK. Hopefully, you can see that they're all going through the very center, and that's where the body-centered atom is located. <clears throat> so with that knowledge, we can now go into calculating the atomic packing uh, fraction for BCC. And that'll be the number of atoms. Well, again, I'll start right at the start. It's going to be the volume of the spheres inside the unit cell divided by the volume of the unit cell. Actually, if I want to be really thorough, I should start with the volume of the atoms. And we're modeling the atoms as spheres. So the APF for BCC is going to be the number of spheres times the volume of a sphere divided by the volume of a cube, which is going to be 2. We just worked it out. There's two atoms inside the BCC unit cell times 4 thirds pi r cubed, the volume of a sphere, divided by a cubed. But again, we've got this pesky A in the denominator and R in the numerator. We'd love to get rid of those to give ourselves a fraction. That's what we're after. Atomic packing factor, it's often called. I prefer to call it atomic packing fraction, but it's just the same thing. So how could we do that? Well, we'd have to work out the length of the cube diagonal. This is a little tight over here, so I'm going to redraw the cube over here just for the purposes of working out a relationship 
between A and R. So we've got the edge length, A, A, and A, because it's a cube. They're all the same. And then we know that the atoms are touching across the cube diagonal, like that, the cube diagonal. And then if I try to draw the atoms in as if they were really hard spheres, you would see that it looked something like this. Okay, and then there's the back bottom, uh, back top right. So you can hopefully see that we've got four radii across the cube diagonal. There's one at the bottom front left. There's two radii through the center, and then one more here. My sketch is not perfect, but hopefully you appreciate what's going on. So then if we take Pythagoras there, in three dimensions, we've got a squared plus a squared plus a squared should equal the cube diagonal all squared, which was 4r all squared. So 3a squared is equal to 16r squared, or a is equal to 4 over root 3r. I'll put that in the little box, and that's the relationship between, um, between a and r for BCC. And so now if we substitute that into our atomic packing fraction calculation, we've got 2 times 4 times pi r cubed over 3 times 4 upon root 3 cubed r cubed. And again, we can cancel out the radius. You see atomic packing fraction is independent of radius. That's a good result. And if, again, you do some massaging on those numbers, you're going to come up with 0. 6, 8. And if you compare that to the atomic packing fraction that we calculate for FCC, you'll realize it's less than that. So this is not close packed. And then the last thing I can do to complete the story for BCC is to <clears throat> show you the coordination number for BCC. So the coordination number, again, is the number of nearest neighbor atoms or the number of atoms touching any atom. And I find it's usually best to start with, for, um, for BCC, just start with this central atom right here. And hopefully you can see with these red lines I've still drawn in the direction of contact, that means that this atom in the center is touching one atom two, three, four corners up at the top, and then four corners, five, six, seven, and eight at the bottom. So the coordination number uh, for BCC is eight. Okay, excellent, thank you very much.